Well, hello and welcome. It's Pentecost Sunday, and I bring you the greetings of the First Church in Ipswich, especially the deacons, and I give a special thanks to Deacon Lynn and Deacon Chris, who are the film crew of this church. And I also greet you on behalf of the Ipswich Local Access Television Station with a special thanks to Beth and Alex and Diane and Jemima, and a special thanks, too, to Anita Kupras and her music leadership in this world, the Labyrinth Choir, her writing, her creativity, her conducting. All of us, we say to you, welcome. Whoever you are, wherever you are in your life or your spiritual journey, however you're feeling today, however strong your faith or strong your doubts, whoever you love, whoever you are, you are welcome here. This is one of God's beautiful homes, and we are some of God's beautiful people. Welcome. I want to talk to you for this season of Pentecost, this beautiful day, about mutuality. And I want to start with a story from a concert that happened in Newburyport last month. A number of members of this church family and also the neighborhoods uh, all around here on the North Shore were able to sing the Paul Winter Consort's composition, the Misa Gaia, which is this mass for the earth that Paul developed mm, some 40 or 50 years ago, and he plays his saxophone in it, and he brings beautiful soloists and a band. And it's this extraordinary piece of music which honors the mutuality of the creatures on the planet. And he, when he was listening to the whale song, he thought he could hear a sanctus in it. And when he was listening to the howling of a wolf, he thought it sounded like the Kyrie eleison. So he wrote a mass, including tape-recorded pieces of the animal's own songs that had been made by scientists. And it's this weaving together of, of, um, of stunning music, you know, where the saxophone is very good at imitating other sounds, and Paul is this brilliant saxophonist, very good at imitating. So you hear the saxophone playing the songs of wildlife, the birds, the whales, the wolves. And then you hear the choir singing, and they're singing Kyrie eleison. They're singing the Sanctus, Sanctus, holy is your name. This, this extraordinary movement of how we're mutual, how we're connected, how we're one, one life here on this planet. And it made me think about the Pentecost story. And I was so grateful to hear the, the the, the chance to be filled by this song. And it made me think about this story, how in Acts chapter 2, the people are filled with song. How it's written there by Luke that there was this rush of wind where the believers were all together. And suddenly, because they spoke different languages, but the, and they hadn't been able to understand each other before, they're, they're assuming that nothing will, will, will be able to be communicated. And suddenly, they can communicate. Suddenly, they can hear each other's prophecies they can they can see it and it feels like wind and it feels like the color red to them and they're so moved they're so inspired and you know that th there's this funny bit in the story where some cynics say oh they're just drunk you know and and Peter gets to say oh no 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 because it's nine in the morning and what we don't know in the scripture but we know if we study the history is that Jews fast on this day and so they've been fasting. They're not drunk, but they are a little, perhaps a little buzzy from their fast, which is amazing. They're seeing things that no one else can see. They're hearing mystical connections and loving it. And the psalm we always read on Pentecost Sunday is Psalm 104, which speaks about God giving us breath and how the, the name for Holy Spirit and for breath in Hebrew is ruach. It's the same word between spirit and breath, and how God gives us breath, gives us spirit, gives us grace. And all of us who breathe, all of life, breathes in this breath. And the psalm says, Oh God, how manifold are thy works, and wisdom hast thou made them all. You know, and there go the Leviathan thou hast formed to sport in the sea. And goes on about God sending out the breath and how we're all animated by it. And every one of us, we're in this place of mutuality. And, you know, there's something miraculous, too, about that word Leviathan. Because this is the only place in Psalm 104 where it's sporting in the sea. In other places in the Bible, people are scared of it. It's, it's dangerous, and yet here it's this happy, sporting thing. It's so lovely to think about the, 
the whales, the leviathan, the, the sporting, playing creatures and the waves. The story of Pentecost with the Holy Spirit going out to all of us calls us to ponder again what our mutual relationships are to each other. You know, Martin Luther King said in 1963 when he wrote from the Birmingham jail his letter, he said all life is interrelated. It's all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. This idea that we're, we're really nothing more than interconnected. And he called us to see it from jail, longing for the prisoners to be free, longing for justice to be found in the land and for us to believe in this promise from scripture and from God's holiness to work for each other and care for each other, sacrifice for each other and stick up for each other. And he was completely right. And the psalm is completely right. And the day is completely right. And the community, the community understanding the languages, it's all so powerful and free and right. And I love it the way Paul Winter points out to the Gaia hypothesis, this idea that the entire range of living matter on Earth, from the whales to the viruses, from oaks to algae, could be regarded as constituting one single living entity. This idea put forth by Lynn Margulis and James Lovelock that we are endowed with faculties and powers as one entity much greater than our constituent parts. I love to think of that on this day, on Pentecost Sunday. And I have one more bit of a story for you from the end of the concert. Because Paul Winter kind of has a secret that he saves up as the concert unfolds. It's about three hours of singing this mass and people listening and loving it. And children's choirs and animal songs taped in. And then Paul Winter invites people to howl their own Kyrie with the wolves. And what had happened with the group, the choir that was practicing, was that a friend of this church, Chris Reif, had brought her beautiful old husky, whose name is Sadie, up for the practice, because Sadie can't stay home long now, because she needs to go out a lot, because she's so old. So Sadie had been there in the practice, sleeping at the foot of Paul Winter, enjoying things and sleeping through it and enjoying the practice. And Paul liked her so much that he asked Chris to bring her to the concert as an honored guest. So Sadie was there sleeping through the concert. And he points out that she's there a few times just because here is this feast of mutuality, right? And there's a beautiful old dog sleeping happily through it. So Paul Winter invited the congregation to sing this howling of the wolves, to sing the Kyrie, to, to howl. And, you know, the, you can see that it's eight, 400 of us sitting there in the Belleville Church in Newburyport. You can see people not quite sure how to start, right? Because it takes a little while to get comfortable with something like that. And you see him howling first, and then you see the choir taking it on and standing up straight and howling. And then the front row begins to howl, and the work, it works its way back towards the back. I was sitting in the back. And so it took me a while to get into it. And then I was so grateful to be a part of it. And what I heard from Chris later was that Sadie slept, the dog slept right through almost all of it until she finally heard enough of this howling to wake her up. And so then she sat up and arched her back and gave one little howl and lay back down and went back to sleep. It's this beautiful feast of mutuality. Paul Winter knows it so well, and he wrote it into the consort, into the Misa Gaia, and we know it so well. We know it when we read Psalm 104 and celebrate the Holy Spirit in each of us in our breath, and how what I breathe in is what the trees have just breathed out, and it's all God. It's all the Spirit. And then what I breathe out is breath for the trees to breathe in, in the, in the heart of God. So in conclusion, I thought I would just sing for you a little bit of the Misa Gaia. It's a part that I learned many, many years ago when we were practicing it in graduate school. It goes like this. For the earth forever turning, for the skies for every sea, to our God we sing returning home to our blue green hills of earth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh.
moved on the waters You called to the deep Then you coaxed up the mountains From the valleys of sleep And over the eons You called to each thing Wake from your slumbers And rise on your way pray. Oh God, we lift our lives to you in the silence, our mutual lives, our interrelated lives, and we ask you for your help in our longing to understand each other and respect each other and live in submission to each other's needs and hopes and longings. We pray for your help with living at peace with all of the violence in the world, in this country, in Ukraine, all of the shootings and the sorrow, we ask for your miracles and your help and your company for the grieving and your conversion of the hearts of the living and your miracles of mutuality. And, oh God, now in the silence, we lift to you the many prayers of our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. And now, beloved, may the peace of the winding road be under your feet, and may the peace of the shining stars be over your heads. 
And may the peace of the Pentecost wind, the holy wind, the wind of the Holy Spirit, the wind of breath and life and love and yes, may the peace of the wind be in your lungs and at your back and all around you and in you. And may the deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you, body, mind, and spirit, this day and every day. Go in peace. Amen.